probably relates more to Nogi um, BJHA rather than Street or MMA because usually they won't do this. But let's just say from this position I'm trying to pass this guard. Okay, this doesn't matter how I do it, like a Torianda, pushing his legs forward, turning him, and as I move to get side control, because when I pass in competition, Nogi competition, the second I get the side control, if I can keep this for three seconds, I get the points, I get three points. Okay? But sometimes a common reaction, especially in competition, is as I pass, he's taking this away from me and just turning to his knees. And I get nothing for the pass. Okay? And then if he's got really good guard retention skills, he might roll over the shoulder and put me back in the guard. So I passed this guard and got nothing for it. Again, you're not going to do this MMA or street. People aren't going to do that, but we have to be um, aware of dealing with this. And probably this is the most high percentage and fundamental back take there is in Jiu Jitsu. If, you, if, you go, um, if you're into watching your BJJ competitions, this happens all the time, this setup. So from this position, when I make my grips and I make Maddie eat his knees, because it's hard for me to pass his legs, again, we'll, we'll go into guard passing maybe in a, in a, in a different meso cycle. It's hard for me to turn him because um, his back's flat on the mat. So all I want to do is, is get his lower back off the mat. So it's like turning the steering of a big bus. So from my position, I, I push his hips forward and I'm turning him this way to create the space for me to enter. But as I try, I could possibly go to knee on belly, whatever, but as I try, to um, get side control, he's already turtling. So my right hand is controlling this hip to slow the turn down. My left hand posts in the mat, and I just slide my left knee behind him, um, or into his hip here. And as he turtles, I'm just shooting in my first hook. Okay? My right hand slowed the whole process down. I lock harness control, and I'll tilt them back. And now we're in the same position again at the top. So, stay there, bro. Man can't move. Okay, so we're here in our position. Nice. I'm going to do the same setup again. Okay, so from here, he has baseball bat control. My left hand releases and grabs that wrist. Okay, this time when I went to go for the may I help you and I done this, Matty hit his finger. Keep your grip, bro. And like last week, he turned, he turned his, see the way he's turned? Go back again. He turned his little finger away. So when he turns that wrist like a reverse motorcycle grip, I can't even get my grip now. But now I go for the wipe off grip, which we showed you last time. There's his thumb. I make a palm heel. I just bulldoze his thumb from this side of my wrist to this side of the wrist. And then I get my special grip again on the fat part between the little finger and the wrist. And now I'm going to bug his neck again. I try to sell the choke. When I feel him pulling down, I just flop this hand straight out, cover it, and hide it behind his arse. Now, all he has is a tuck chin. I have two ways of dealing with this. I can dig it in or slice it in. So I make like a palm heel and I put this part of my wrist underneath his chin and I just dig it in. So I just do one, two, just till I get that little bit underneath his chin, okay? Then I flatten my hand, I slide it onto his shoulder and then I lift my wrist up and then I punch it through, okay? So I've got the crook of my arm right underneath his chin. My right bicep is cutting off his right jugular, my left forearm is cutting off his other jugular. And we'll, we'll finish it there, because next time we'll show you how to finish the choke. There's a variety of things I can do from that position. So, let's go again from the pass. It's flat in his bag. I make grips. So rather than trying to um, pass and turn him with his back flat on the mat, I elevate his knees a little bit, so now he's easily turned. But as I maybe drop in the knee on belly, he's already turning. So my right hand controls his wrist, I push my left hand on the mat, I slide my hip beside his lap, and as, as he goes to turn, just turn to your knees, bro, there's a space opens up here. My first hook's already in. Second hook, and I've got my harness control. So again, from our position, He's got baseball bat control. I release my wrist and grab his wrist. I'm already trying to do the may I help you, but he's turned his wrist. If I see his thumb, I can do the wipe off. I just bulldoze it off and get my special grip. Now, I sell this choke. 
he's digging it in. When I feel the momentum really pulling on that arm, I just flop it out and do my tricky bait. Comes over the top, hide it behind his arse. If he tries to kick off that bottom hook, I'm already using my lock-in position. I can keep this foot free, or I can even cross my ankles here. Now all he has is a tuck chin. So, this part of the wrist comes underneath, and I just dig it in, till I just get the small part of my wrist underneath. I'll punch this through, then I flatten my hand, and I raise my wrist up, and now I just punch my arm all the way through. So I've got my bicep behind his jugular, and my forearm behind his other jugular, and my right hand just grabs the bone on his left shoulder, okay? That's the dig-in method. The slicing method, fuck your chin bro, I just make two fingers and I start behind his ear. This is not nice. <laughs> From there, I just slice it and keep your chin really tight. Comes all the way around. And it comes, make my grip again. My goal is to get my elbow underneath his chin. Okay, one more go. When you're feeling, finished drilling this, you'll be going home with a big red egg tonight. <laughs> so, I make my grips. Push his knees forward, and as I turn him and try to come to knee on belly, he's rolling to the turbo. My right hand controls the hip, left hand posts. And I wait until that space opens up, and I just shoot my first hook in. Second hook comes in, and I lock harness control. And I go for the same setup again. So he grab his wrist, try to may I help you, wipe off, sell the choke, jerky arm bait, and now from there all he has is a tucked chin. So I can come in, dig it in, punch it through, flat hand, raise the elbow, get it to there, or slice it in, two fingers, start at the ear, and just drive it underneath, come way under his chin. Once I get to this position, we'll show you next time how to finish the show, okay? So, let's do it, guys.